And now a Chinese fairy tale, as it was told to me some time ago by my good friend, the writer Clark Ashton Smith. He called it the legend of the willow landscape. It seems there was once a picture, an old, old picture, done by a great artist so long ago that his name was forgotten. It was painted on silk, and for many years it had been the most cherished possession of the poet Xiliang. It was a beautiful picture. Mountains rose in the background, huge mountains rendered vague by the slow withdrawal of the morning mists. In the foreground, a little stream ran down to a lake, and it was crossed on its way by a dainty bamboo bridge. Beyond the stream, willows of vernal green, and partly hidden among them, a tiny hut, its door half open. On the little bamboo bridge stood a girl, young and lovely, dressed in blue. The poet Chi Liang felt that he knew this landscape intimately. Somehow it reminded him of far off things for which his heart had always longed in vain, of days and places lost beyond recall. And each time he gazed upon it, he felt like an exile coming home at last. The poet Chi Liang had need for such a refuge. He was no longer young. He was ill, he was alone, and he was burdened heavily with financial obligations to the mighty Mandarin Mang Mo. The Mandarin Mang Mo had everything his heart desired. Wealth, shame, power, companions. He was a man of exquisite tastes, a collector of rare and beautiful things. He had heard of Shi Liang's painting, and one day he came to look at it. He was delighted. He would buy it, he said. Would pay twice its value. Yes, three times its value. In fact, he would, in exchange for the picture, cancel all and everything that Shi Liang owed him. And would Shi Liang be good enough to have the picture delivered to the palace tomorrow? In the morning. Tomorrow in the morning. Immortal sorrow took possession of Xiliang. In the weariness of his days, how could he go on living without his picture? But he knew the fulfillment of his creditor's wish was the only way to repay his debt. He bowed. The Mandarin left. Alone, Chi Liang went back to his picture for the last time to commune with the beloved scene, for the last time to dream in its haven. The rays of early evening were dancing on the silk canvas where it hung on the bare wall. Never before had the foliage been so tender with immortal spring. Never before the maiden on the bridge so lovely with unfading youth. And now there happened a strange thing. The sun had gone down as Shi Liang stood gazing and dreaming, and twilight and darkness were creeping into the room. Yet the picture retained its luminous glory as if lit by another sun than that of this world and the landscape grew the landscape became larger deeper brighter the dreary dismal room dissolved and Shi Liang stood young and strong in the morning sun from the little bamboo bridge the girl smiled and beckoned him on, and the ground was soft under his feet, and the leaves of the willows trembled in the summer wind, and the door of the hut stood open. The Mandarin Mang Mo 
was pleased with his new possession, but there was a certain detail which puzzled him. He very clearly remembered one figure on the little bamboo bridge, a girl in blue. And now there were two figures. Strange, thought the old Mandarin. Very, very strange.